So I just watched The Batman and I had lots of thoughts. I love the movie. I think it's great and it has, I love Gotham in it. I love The Batman. Uh, the villains, I thought, well, for the most part, was great. Um, just the whole atmosphere of it and that they went in this detective route more than the action. I really loved. So let's just jump into it and start with my favorite scene slash sequence. And that's the prologue. The opening of the film is this prologue where Batman just talks about how Gotham is, how dirty and criminal and and how he has to fight and why he fights uh, which will pay off in the end of the movie but he can't be everywhere and we get this really nice sequence very visual with no batman to see and and he he talks about how he has to be everywhere by utilizing fear so we get these multiple shots of him from dark allies corners and the criminals awaits him which was really great speaking of the batman i think Robert Pattinson did a great job giving us a fresh and different Batman. I was uh, kind of skeptical when I first heard the news. Uh, it just felt wrong, but, but I think he proved himself. And he has this moody, emo <laughs> Batman, but I think it really fits his arc. And I loved him being this obsessed about what he does as Batman. Like the Bruce Wayne billionaire style, he, he didn't really care for. So he's all into this being the Batman, being the detective. And the film is essentially a detective plot. It has this heavy seven vibes. And I love that. I That was the thing that made me go to the cinema. It was when the director said he was trying to emulate the seven uh, feeling. And it really is like in the cinematography. It's, it's a beautiful film in the way it's dark and dirty. And you guys, if you watched my channel, you know I love seven. I'll say it really works for the visuals. Having it constantly rain, having this kind of depressed cinematography, this heavy darkness over the city. But I think he borrows a bit too much of seven like characters the whole crime plot and the villain and the crime plot worked a lot better in seven i couldn't make a whole video on that but like a quick note on it is i think the audience participates a lot more in the seven crime plot than they do in the batman in the batman we kind of just watch the batman figure it out we we're, we're not a part of it at least that's how i feel it one thing i noticed quite early in these detective scenes and just the whole feeling of the movie, the structure, was this uh, game feeling. I, I really, at times I felt I was playing a single player game with like cutscenes. And I, I don't know if that was bad or good. It's just something uh, I thought about. And I think it's good. I kind of liked it. Watching Batman solve these puzzles and then kind of triggering a cutscene with him and James Gordon would like meet with the Batlight and just talk a lot of exposition, almost like he got the new quest. Then he'd, he would go do some more riddles then an action scene would uh, like be triggered and he would fight. So it was it, so many times I felt like I was playing a game or watching like, some sort of highly cinematic gameplay. Another thing that I really loved was the music. I had a bit mixed feelings about the music because on the one hand, the first time I heard the Batman theme, it's really simple but highly, uh, highly melodic, but it was so limited. There was like two themes, two main themes, and that was the Batman theme and this orphan theme, this sad theme. And they're so short and they play them again and again and again. And it's it's not like, I, I love light motifs and uh, themes that shows up over the duration of the film. But I felt like say Lord of the Rings is a heavily scored film. They use music everywhere, every time, even if it's sad or if it's uh, happy. If there's fighting, there's always, almost always music. And it's the same with the Batman, but instead of having like Howard Shore with loads of music and different complex thoughts and ideas to the music, they have those two very simple themes, uh, which are good. But on the other hand, it drove me nuts. I was like, almost like uh, triggered by it. I, I was almost scratching my head uh, and baffled that they didn't make more music for this film. And, and the film is three hours long and the amount of score they use in this film just didn't have enough music to it. I think the themes they used was really great. Like I saw this uh, little stupid short film on TikTok recreating a Batman scene with the music. And I'm not kidding, during those one minutes with these uh, guys screwing around, I actually got goosebumps. So that's how effective the music is. Anyways, that works for a scene or a half an hour, but like for three hours, it just becomes too much. Yeah, that brings me to the runtime. And I'm not a guy who complains about runtimes, but I felt it in this movie and that's never a good sign. Just, it's like a, everyone who's watched it will know that there's a place that the film could have wrapped up, but it kind of... It continues and it goes on and it feels like the weakest part of the movie. And, and that ties in with the villain, the, the Riddler. Though I really love Paul Dano. Yeah, he didn't, his character just didn't land for me. It worked when it was just like the Riddler. It was kind of just uh, annoying in a way. I really loved the Penguin though. Uh, I think he was a 
great villain in this movie. And I already knew Colin Farrell was the one playing him. I think of him as like a B-list actor, but I think he really elevated this villain. So, and I loved the experience of watching it. And it's not so often I have so many thoughts about a movie. Uh, watching it, that says something. It makes me think, and I love that. I love to think. Uh, anyways, um, the style was amazing. Uh, the fear, uh, some of the horror scenes, the detective angle. Yeah, I just really loved that. And before this movie, I didn't really care. But now I really want to watch a whole trilogy with uh, Robert Pattinson. Watch them continue this detective angle. I hope they will be a bit more original in their plot for the next film. But anyways, that's it for my thoughts. If you want me to make a longer video on this, let me know. And since we're at the topic of superheroes, be sure to check out my video on Spider-Man No Way Home, where I talk about who is the best villain and more importantly why. See you in the next video and make sure to like, subscribe and all that stuff and have a nice week. Bye! Thank you.